How's it going everyone? Got some unfortunate news to talk about in this video in regards to the future of Dead Space as noted by Jason Schreier. We'll talk about that and what Motive Games is working on going forward. Jason Schreier over on Twitter noted new yes dead space is now on ice again ea's motive explorer had ideas for a new entry last year but none were greenlit chief hope was for a new game not a remake of dead space 2 despite today's rumors although both ideas were explored a rumor today suggested that ea shelved a dead space 2 remake which an ea spokesperson denied saying there was no validity to this story people familiar with the project tell bloomberg that ea statement is correct motive has been on other projects for nearly a year yes motive has been working on a variety variety of other things, licensed projects, and things of that sort. Uh, I had been hoping that, you know, maybe we could get more Dead Space content, but uh, when I started hearing about Motive potentially working on this new Iron Man project, which that's already been announced, we know that's coming, and we know that a lot of publishers, a lot of developers these days are very much into the licensed games, um, even if they do cost a pretty penny to license out these IPs. Man, they can sell pretty damn well, as we've seen with Insomniac and Marvel Spider-Man. And Motive is said to also be working on a new Battlefield title. So when you're juggling big projects like a new Iron Man title and a new Battlefield title... It gave up a lot of question on, hey, is there even a new Dead Space in the works? Is Dead Space going to be a franchise that's going to continue? And at this point, it looks like it has been iced. And man, there's a lot of ways uh, to digest this information. I don't think a lot of us were expecting that even with Dead Space Remake coming out, it wasn't a formality that that was going to be a franchise that was here to stay for a long time. And while Dead Space Remake did... Seem like respectable numbers commercially. It's not a game that blew the doors off everything from a commercial standpoint either. And we know that from a publisher like EA, when they're working on these big budget titles, they're looking to blow the doors off. And so is every publisher. Obviously, it's going to be a game of getting the most sales possible. At the end of the day, it's always a business and... It looked like they had explored ideas about the potential of a new Dead Space game and a Dead Space 2, and it looks like from an EA standpoint, how I am uh, taking this information, it was more of a higher-up EA standpoint that those games were not green, that possibly by looking at the sales numbers of the Dead Space remake. If we were to talk about why Dead Space as a remake didn't, uh, you know, do incredibly well, well, I would say that first of all, Dead Space was a game that people wanted to see make a comeback, but I don't necessarily know if everybody was clamoring for a ground-up remake of Dead Space 1. When it was announced, don't get me wrong, I was incredibly excited about it, but when you're talking about a remake for a game that came out in 2008 and you're attaching a $70 price tag to it, uh, I just don't know how well that's going to be received. And I think for a remake like the Dead Space remake, uh, you're looking at other PS3 era titles that have been remade, like Last of Us Part 1, but Last of Us was from 2013, and I don't know how much of an undertaking it was to get Last of Us Part 1 out the door versus, let's say, getting a Dead Space remake out the door. And on top of that, Last of Us as an IP, Dead Space as an IP, um, you know, those Last of Us is certainly a bigger IP. When you talk about those PS3 era remakes that we're starting to see a little bit more of. On top of that, and I remember when we were talking about the Dead Space remake on this channel leading up to its release, and at the end of the day, we have a small audience in terms of the totality of people that buy video games, but I was a little bit surprised at how many people were like, hey man, uh, exciting game, $70 is a bit too much. And I had that notion as well. I was just like thinking Dead Space is one of those games that I don't know if people are going to be uh, down to spend $70 on for a remake. At the end of the day, a single player $70 game is always going to be a hard sell depending on what type of game it is. And I think when you hit that $70 price threshold, it does become an issue of how much content are you offering me for that $70. From my personal standpoint, I am of the mindset that, you know, games should be however long games are, and you shouldn't worry that much about length versus price. But that is my personal standpoint, and I'm in a very, very good position where playing video games is a part of this channel, so I'm going to be playing the majority of video games that come out. I know for 
the majority of people, they're not going to be buying every single game that comes out. And when you're asking for $70 for a game, you look at something like the Dead Space Remake, while it did comfortably well from a sales standpoint, from how I look at it, EA's projections are obviously going to be a little bit different. And I don't know if the price point differential of it being $60 versus $70 would have made that big of a difference. At the end of the day, I don't think it would. I think Dead Space as an IP just kind of has its audience, and that's it. It's its audience. It's a respectable audience. It has a good audience, but uh, I don't think it's going to be at the level of the sales numbers of what EA wants. And if EA is in the position where they can task Motive to do an Iron Man game that can potentially be incredibly successful with how big of an IP Iron Man is, and then you're also talking about Battlefield. If you're doing a new Battlefield game and you want Motive to help out with that title, Battlefield is this game that they can monetize for a lengthy period of time and selling people and getting people into Battlefield and selling a copy of Battlefield is much more valuable than selling a copy of Dead Space. I think this is something more and more people have to realize when it comes to game sales and that is the fact that now in 2024, not all game sales are created equally in the sense that if you are creating a game that has that live service gimmick attached to it, selling a million copies of that game is much more valuable than selling a million copies of, let's say, the Dead Space remake where that live service game, you're selling a million copies of it, let's say a Battlefield title, and Battlefield would sell way more than a million, but for the sake of argument, Selling a million copies of Battlefield is way more valuable than selling a million copies of Dead Space because once you sell that million copies of Dead Space, that's it. Chuck Dead Space to the side. You're not monetizing that game any further. It is what it is. Battlefield, you sell a million copies, you still sell that game for $70, but you have the potential to monetize that game even further. So if you sell a million copies of Battlefield, suddenly, yeah, 500,000 of those sales, they're going to play Battlefield for $70 and they're going to have a good time. But that other 500,000 people, they might be buying all of these Ultimate Editions. They might be taking advantage of DLC that comes out and in-game purchases, so on and so forth. So that 500,000 portion of the million total sales becomes so much more valuable. And that's something I think a lot of people have to realize when they assess sales numbers, especially now in 2024 and going forward. Not all sales are created equally, especially with live service becoming as much of a focal point as it is. And uh, I ultimately think the bubble will burst and we're seeing that bubble burst. But from an EA standpoint of what they're going to task Motive to do, and uh, I understand from their vantage point why they are of the mindset, hey, Iron Man can turn out to be huge. Hey, Battlefield, that's something that we do want to revitalize. And I think they're in a pretty good direction of revitalizing it with some of the success they've had with 2042 recently. But nevertheless, obviously, Obviously, from a personal standpoint, I tried to come at this from an objective standpoint in the sense of understanding why EA is making the decisions that they do. From a personal standpoint, as somebody that's been a longtime fan of the Dead Space games, very disappointing. Uh, I would have loved to see a Dead Space 2 remake, but even more than that, I would have loved to see Dead Space as an IP just continue being an IP that people gravitate towards. But AAA gaming, from a single player standpoint, it's a hard game to get into. I think there's a lot of games that can pop off and be successful. Dead Space is in one of those middle levels where it's not a Resident Evil in terms of uh, top level survival horror games and appeal. Resident Evil uh, is incredibly popular. Resident Evil also at this stage of the game hasn't gone to $70. I'm curious if that is going to change the reception. I don't think it is. I think the $10 at the end of the day is relatively innocuous, but it matters to an extent. But ultimately, we'll see how Resident Evil does when it moves to 70 bucks as well. Uh, but that'll do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts. Again, unfortunate news, the reality of the gaming world. So what can you do? But sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.